To them I'm going to show you how to place and replace text in a picture just like this one using basic tools in Photoshop. And this is starting now. What's up guys, my name is Francois. Thanks so much for joining me on this beautiful day. Uh, this video is the first one in a playlist on how to conquer Photoshop, the basic tutorials. I'm going to release beginners, intermediates and advanced tutorials for Photoshop, After Effects and Premiere Pro. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel to learn how to become an absolute beast. If you already have experience in Photoshop, that's great. You're still going to learn something quite cool today. But if you've never ever opened this program before, I'm going to show you how to get some pretty cool results right away. Also, we're going to cover quite a lot of ground today, but don't worry, it's all quite basic. So grab your snacks and make sure you stick until the end of the video so you don't miss anything. Let's go. So these are the pictures we're going to work on. As always, for you to practice and follow along this tutorial, I've left a link in the description to download the exact same pictures. Once you open Photoshop, just select them all and drag them on the canvas here. We're going to start with this one. What we're going to do is replace the time here because we don't like the font and I think we can get something better. So this interface can be quite overwhelming at first, but don't worry, we're going to only use a few of them and I'll show you exactly which one. So we're going to go from the tool panel to the canvas, which is where the main picture is, and the layers. Double click this one to create that new layer. If we were to say add another picture, say this one, you see now we can't see the laptop anymore because that layer car is on top of layer zero. If we were to drag the car underneath the laptop picture, the car disappears. Similarly, if we were to remove with the eraser parts of the laptop picture, it would reveal whatever is underneath it. So that's basically how layers work. Let's undo that a bunch. In Photoshop, it's not exactly Ctrl Z, it's uh, Ctrl Alt Z to go back and Ctrl Shift Z to go forward. If you want to do Ctrl Z, it's going to undo and redo the last action only. So that's out of the way. So once again, from the start, once you've opened that laptop layer, it's going to create a locked background image. Just double click on it, enter whatever name you want, I'm going to call it laptop, and press enter. Now in the panel section, we're going to go to the lasso tool or press L on the keyboard, you're going to see there's three options. If you click and hold, you're going to have the lasso, you're going to have the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. We're only going to f uh, worry about the first one. To zoom in on the picture, command or control plus and minus on your keypad or hold alt and the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. So we're first going to remove the AM sign here. So with the, once again, the lasso tool, draw a rough circle around it and let go. So what's this done is just selected that portion here. If you right click, you're gonna see a bunch of options. Don't worry about all of them, just go to the fill option here. In contents, this is what's gonna replace whatever's inside that circle. We're gonna to go to content aware, don't worry about the other ones. And make sure this is on 100% and press OK. So that tool calculates whatever's around that circle and replaces it with what it thinks it should be. So that's what we're going to do for the rest of the time. So zooming out, just to cover more ground, I'm going to show you the polygonal lasso. So once again, if you click and hold uh, and you let go when you're hovering over the polygonal tool, just do that. Now you just click once, it's going to start creating a line. Click again, it's creating a second line and so on and so forth. Just do that until you're happy with your selection and double click at the end to confirm. Once again, right click, go down to fill, content aware, 100% opacity and press OK. So it's done a good job for the top, not for the bottom. So let's just do that again. Select that portion here, double click to confirm, right click, fill and OK. And now we have a brand new screen without the nine. So let's do the same for the rest. I'm not going to speed through that just so you, you get some repetition and some practice along with the video. So once again, with the polygonal lasso tool, click, it's going to create a, a, a line. Click again, it's going to create a second one, so on and so forth. Double click at the end to confirm the selection, right click and fill. Absolutely brilliant. So now what we want to do is add a new text layer on top of the laptop so that we can have a new font for the time. So to add a new layer at the bottom of the layer panel, just click on this create new layer button. It's going to create a new layer at the top of the laptop one, which means that whatever we put inside of the new layer will be in front of the laptop. And if you press T on your keyboard, it's going to change the cursor to the type tool, which you can also find here. Now with the new layer selected, just click in the canvas, drag and release. This is creating a new box for you to write in and it's added some uh, random Latin text in it because why not? 
With all this text selected, delete everything and enter the time again, AM 9.56, and press enter on your keypad to validate that. If you want to move it now, because we can't really see anything, just press V on the cursor to go back to the normal move tool, or just go there, make sure the layer is selected and just move it in place. Now it's important for you to make sure the, la the right layers are selected every single time, because if you were to select the laptop, this will happen and we don't want that. With this text selected, you're gonna have some character tools here. If you don't have it, just go to window and select character here. Uh, this is gonna basically be your size, the line spacing, so it's the space between each uh, lines, obviously. Uh, this is the tracking, which is basically the space between each character. You can just turn it up or down as you wish. I'm just gonna leave it to normal for now. Maybe bring the size up a little bit. And we're gonna make this AM uh, text just a bit smaller. So there's a bunch of options here. You have bold, italic, capitalized, and everything. We're gonna go for the superscript one. So that kind of matches the original picture. Now that we're happy with the text layer, let's just press enter on the keypad, and it's just gonna apply all the changes. So now we can see if we were to put this layer below the laptop one, it disappears because it's hidden behind the laptops. So that's, once again, how layers work. Just before we move along, let's just take a look at how to uh, amend the text, just in case we want to change the time. So for that, just double click on the layer here, and it's just gonna reopen that selection tool. So just do that, and resize maybe the box, just to match the size of the text for now. We don't need the extra space. Release, and press once again, enter on the keypad. So now let's talk about how to align the text with the angle of the laptop itself. So as you can see, the laptop is not exactly front on, there's a bit of an angle this way and this way. So now we're going to take a look at the transform tool, which is basically how to resize, rotate and change the perspective on the layer. Before we do that, we just have to convert the layer, the text layer, to what we call a smart object. So if you right click on the layer, not on the thumbnail, um, you're going to have a bunch of options which you can ignore for now. We click on convert to smart object. So this is basically just creating a folder in which the text layer ends up. So if you want to open the layer, just double click on the thumbnail and you see it's opened a new window here with the original text layer. So this is just in case you want to go back and change maybe the color or change the text itself. So we don't need it for now, let's just close it. Now that we have the smart object selected, go over to the move tool or press V on your keyboard and now press command and T. So this is gonna bring up your transform tool. So now you can resize the layer, you can rotate it and do another bunch of stuff. What we can do now is hold command or control and click on the corner of those of this layer and just align it with the corners of the screen. This is gonna give us our perspective. All right, without holding anything on the keyboard, just click on the corners here, we're gonna resize it. And double click or press enter on the keypad to confirm the changes. I think the characters now are a bit too long, they've been stretched a bit too much, so we're just gonna remedy that. So, with the layer selected, uh, press Command or Control T again, hold down Shift and drag the top handle, which is basically gonna um, disable the proportional uh, transform. If I don't hold Shift, you see it's um, scaling down proportionally, whereas if I hold Shift, it's removing the proportion. Again, so let's just go back to that, make it match how we want it, hold on shift, and double click the layer or press enter on the keypad again to confirm. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks in terms of the light alignment, I think we did a pretty good job here, but I still think we can improve the colors and we can improve the way that the text blends in the picture. So let's take a look at what we're trying to match here. You can see first of all that the text isn't actually white, it's a bit of a gray here, but it goes a bit darker as it goes to the bottom right corner of the laptop. There's a bit of a gradient going diagonally, so I think we can recreate that just simply. If you double click on the text layer, not on the thumbnail, on the layer itself, you can bring up some layer styles, which are a bunch of options that you can do to modify the way it looks. The one we're going to take a look at is the gradient overlay. Just like the name subjects, it's going to overlay a gradient. Pretty basic. So obviously these are not the right colors, so let's just click on the gradient here and select by default this one, the black and white one. Press enter. Now you have total control over the placement and the rotation of this gradient. So like we saw in the original picture, the gradient goes from the top left corner of the laptop to the bottom right corner here. 
So let's just try and match roughly the angle here. Just click and drag until you're happy with it. You can also see a preview of the gradient that you're applying onto the text here on the little thumbnail here. That's pretty handy. If we move it a bit more, you can see the effect here. We're gonna use the scale to try and match the level of gradient. So the black here is a bit too dark and the white is a bit too bright. So let's just increase that scale a bit more until we're happy. Maybe move the gradient towards the right again. Maybe decrease the opacity before and after. Okay, once we're happy, you press OK and you're done. So there we go, we've replaced a text layer using Photoshop. So let's take a look at the second example. Let's say you've hired this car for a photo shoot and it didn't come with a number plate. But now the police is after you because you have to prove that it wasn't stolen or anything. Don't worry, your pal Francois is here to help you out. So just like the first picture, once you open it on Photoshop, it's gonna create a background layer which is locked. So just double click on it and press enter to unlock it and make it a new layer. Uh, we're not going to touch it, so we're just going to create a new one straight away on top of it, not underneath it so it shows. Press T on the keyboard to bring up the text tool. With the top layer selected, click on the Canva and drag until you're happy with the size and let go. Type in your text. If it doesn't show, it just means that the text is too big to show compared to the content box. So just press Command or Control A to select all the text. Click here to drag the size down. Oh, check it out message here. Let's resize the content box to the size of the text and press enter on the numpad. So this is great, but obviously it's not the right color, it's not the right position. So let's just first of all start with positioning it on top of the number plate. So once again, because we've just used the text tool, if we want to move it, it's not going to work. It's going to select the text, it's going to do a bunch of weird stuff. You're going to think, ah, Photoshop is rubbish, I can't make it work, this is not what I want, blah, blah, blah. So before you do any dragging or clicking or anything, just make sure you have the move tool selected or press V on your keyboard to select it. And now you'll be able to move the layer around. So let's just place it on top here. Press Command or Control T to resize it until we're happy. Something around this. Double click to confirm the changes. Now if you press Command plus or minus on your keyboard, you're gonna be able to zoom in and out. And then to move, just press the space bar and click on the canvas and drag it till you're happy. Okay, so first of all, let's just match the color. So just bring up the character panel again, click on color, and maybe this time just select a darker color so you don't have to do anything just hover outside of this color picker box and it's going to bring up the color picker so you can see you can select a white or a shade of blue but it's not really visible so let's just go for a dark color click ok so once again let's match the perspective of it so first of all before we do any transformation let's select the layer right click and convert to smart object now press ctrl command t hold down command and match the corners Okay, let's resize it a little bit. Replace it in the center. And once you're happy with it, just confirm. So this is great and everything, but um, I don't want you to get in trouble because people think that you stole this car or whatever. So let's just add a few more effects to it. So one of the things that helps selling an effect like this is matching the lighting. So by that, I mean adding some shadow at the bottom and maybe, maybe some highlights at the top of the letters, which is very easy. So double click on the subscribe layer, not on the thumbnail, just over here. And it's going to bring up the same layer styles as earlier. So you're going to recognize the gradient of layer, which we're not going to use. Just take the drop shadow, click on it. And this is basically just creating the exact same layer at a certain distance, angle or shape. Look at the preview here and what we're going to try to do is match the color. Maybe make it some kind of dark blue here. Distance is obviously going to adjust distance between the shadow and the original text. The size is how many pixels that shadow is going to be. And the spread is just how much of those pixels you want to see. So this is basically creating a soft or hard effect. So let's just try and make it look uh, believable. Adjust the angle to make the light come from the top, just like the picture here. Maybe make it one pixel, drop the opacity down, change the angle a little bit more. Okay, so this is subtle, but it's just adding a little bit of uh, volume to the letters. Now let's add some highlights and select the inner shadow. So what this is going to do is add shadows inside of the characters as opposed to behind them. You'll see what I mean. Let's just go with the crazy color to show you what this effect does. Make it thicker. So now if you increase the distance, it's gonna offset it, but you can see kind of what it does. It, it goes from the outside in. So that's not what we want. Obviously, let's just try and match the colors first. So let's click here 
and select maybe a bright blue color. So maybe some reflection here. Press center, reduce the distance back to zero, size to one, maybe the choke to about 45. And let's put back the angle to here, before and after. So this is very subtle, obviously, but it's just to add some realism to it. So there you go, I'm pretty happy with the results. So you've just added yourself a new plate number and avoided a whole lot of trouble. So you may want to save this as a JPEG, so let's go over to File, Save As, enter a new name. This is my car. Go over to Format, change from Photoshop to JPEG. Press Save once. It's going to bring up the JPEG option. Just leave everything as normal. Just make sure the quality is on 12, which is the maximum. And press OK. And there we go, you've just got yourself a brand new picture. So to sum up this video, we've taken a look at how to open a picture in Photoshop. We've learned how the layer system works. We've created a new layer. We've even taken a look at tools like the text tool, the select tool, the move tool, the transform tool. We even changed perspective on a layer, which is crazy. Also, we've taken a look at the content aware feel and a couple of layer styles like the drop shadow and the inner shadows. So now go ahead and impress your friends, your family, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and even your dog. Right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did and you didn't mind my accent, make sure you give this video a like, get subscribed and hit the notification bell. Also, if you want me to cover any specific technique or subject relating to content creation or graphic design, drop me a comment below and I'll make sure to answer every single one of them. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, you can click this video here. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Francois, you've been great. See you next Thursday.